Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. Um, this is actually about a specific product that we both, Ian and I, have had the opportunity to try out and we both really like. Um, Jeff from Matrix Armory approached us about his wall system that allows you to present firearms in a very aesthetically pleasing way. And Ian did a video already about that, I'll put that in the description, where he went deep dive on how to install the wall and some of what he displayed on his wall. Now, I don't have as many firearms to display as Ian does, at least not ones that are worth looking at in a nice way. And so my wall is much smaller and I placed it higher up on the wall than Ian did. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is what I did with my Matrix Armory wall and how I installed it and some of the guns that I put on it. First. Let's talk about what it takes to install the wall. So behind me, and continuing with our trend of pointing with interesting things, this is a World War I German butcher blade bayonet. You have a girder at the top, a girder on the bottom, you have these slots in the middle, or slats, and then you have wood to go between them, and then that's it, and then these little decorative pieces go up, and it looks gorgeous right off the bat. Getting this together was a piece of cake. Getting this whole wall up took me about an hour. Putting the guns up took me a lot longer because I wanted to get them just right. Let's go ahead and go through the guns that I put on my wall to give you an idea of how I decorated mine and it gives you ideas about how you might want to decorate yours. All right, let's start from the top. Here we have a replica of an 1861 Springfield musket. This was the quintessential or one of the quintessential firearms of the American Civil War. Uh, obviously this is a Union weapon, however the South used it as well when they could capture it. And they made their own version of it called the Richmond in 1863, essentially the same gun. That is of course a muzzle loader firing a 500 plus grain Minier ball in front of a 60 grain 2F black powder charge. And below that we've got a Remington rolling block. This is chambered in 4570 uh, with a Tang mounted precision sight. This is going to feature prominently in our lever action alternative history 1876. U.S. Army squad discussion as the DMR, and it is shooting some incredible groups already. Uh, more to come on that. This is a Henry Company, U.S. made reproduction of the 1860 Henry rifle. Now this one's chambered, of course, in 45 Colt because 44 Henry rimfire is unobtainium, uh, but it is a beautiful firearm heirloom quality, and it really suits this wall very well. This is my very old, very beat up, 1866 Winchester reproduction from Uberti, also chambered at 45 Colt. Now I have filmed some segments with this and that's going to be our squad leader in the uh, alternative history role. And this is a blank spot that we're gonna fill in a moment. We'll talk about that later. And this is the 1876 Winchester we spoke of in that alternative history segment. This one's chambered at 4560. This is what we envision being the rifleman's rifle and it is an incredible gun for its time and really underappreciated and really not well known. So you're going to be seeing more on that for sure. As you can see the top half of my Matrix Army wall is pretty much Old West. This is an 1860 uh, conversion called a Richard Mason conversion. This would have been originally an 1860 Colt that was converted to fire cartridges. In the day these were 44 Henry. This one's in 45 Colt although I load to 44 Henry spec. This is sometimes referred to as an Avenging Angel. This is an 1860 Colt as well that's been cut down to a tiny snub nose and has a cartridge conversion in it. This also is chambered in 45 Colt, although you can pull the cylinder out and fire percussion caps again if you'd like. This is an Iver, this is, excuse me, a Merwin and Holbert uh, 38 Smith & Wesson. Uh, amazing piece of engineering and I'm working on getting that gun running again. So we're now out of the Old West and going into some German equipment and I'm starting from the newer to the older here. This is a 1943 BCD uh, Car 98K in the ZF-41 sniper configuration. Really more of a DMR than a sniper rifle. However, a uh, pretty interesting gun and it shoots great. This is the carrying case for the ZF-41 scope. And you can see I mounted that with just a little bar across from one of those guide rods on the Matrix armory wall. You can do lots of stuff and mount things very creatively on here and it's a neat way to put stuff up that isn't necessarily a gun directly and so having the carrying case with the rifle makes a lot of sense. We move down and this is my 1933 Mauser Banner commercial model. Uh, 98. This was not the Car 98K yet, but as you can see, it really is a Car 98K. It's pre-war, and it was what got them to adopt the Car 98K, and this is just the commercial model that came out a little bit before the war. Now this one's particularly interesting, because while it's a commercial model, it's got that X on it, and that X indicates Russian capture. So this was pushed into service on the Eastern Front, even though it was a commercial model, made pre-war, and ultimately captured by the Russians in some uh, obviously lost battle for the Germans, of which they lost many, of course. And then we go down to World War I. 
This is a essentially a car 98 A A Z. This is World War One. This is a 1914 dual date stamp gun. So this one was made in 1914, but it also has a 1920 date stamp on it, showing that someone turned it in to the Weimar Republic under the legal requirement to do so. And when they turned them in, they put another date of 1920 on it, showing that they had been turned in legally. The other thing that's interesting about this is this gun had a uh, duffel cut right here. When I got it, I fixed that so I can use it. That duffel cut was done by USGIs when they would capture enemy weapons. They would cut the stock in half to get it into their duffel bag. And it also has a proof mark right here for the German Postal Service. I don't know if we'll be able to see that. Yep, there it is. When uh, they were rearming illegally before World War II, they found uh, a loophole in the law that allowed them to arm their own postal service. And so they started rearming via the postal service uh, with things like World War I weapons like the Car 98 AZ to get ready for their ultimate goals, which of course we do know now what they were. So that's how I've got my wall set up. Let me go ahead and start talk, talking about how I'm going to mount my 1897 Winchester shotgun in that little gap that's missing there. And we'll have some conclusions after that. So here we have that 1897 Winchester shotgun that I mentioned is going to go on the wall. This one was made in 1907. It's also had an action job on it. It is smooth as glass. Really cool gun. And here is a small variety of some of the mounting options you have on the Matrix Armory wall. These are the bits that actually go into the slots that hold the gun ultimately to the wall. And then these little bits go onto the front of those mounting posts to get the gun on the wall. There are so many ways that you could potentially mount things and firearms or any other sort of thing on this wall that we can by no means go through all the particular options. You find the ones that fit the gun that you're trying to put on the wall and when you're done it gives it the illusion of actually floating out there which is pretty darn cool. And you can see some of them are actually designed for bayonets or blades so that these are blade type hooks which uh, I have not done a blade but as you can see it's meant for that purpose. Anyways let's go ahead and talk about how we size and fit what we want to put this gun up with. I've already kind of looked and the reality is for me, the simple answer is probably going to be these little hooks right here. And so we're going to check and look at the size. That one's about right. For this one, obviously it's going to go here, so it's in front of the pump. And I already checked and this hook actually fits perfectly right here at this part of the stock. In fact, it fits so perfectly that it stays there without any actual work. A little bit of tension. So that's what we're going to use to mount this gun on the wall. What happens is you take this, which is what goes into the slat and by applying tension to it, eventually it locks in place like this. So this goes into the slat, this gets applied tension forward, and as a result it locks itself into the wall, and then the hook itself goes onto this, the front end of it, it simply threads on, which is quite easy, and you have a locking nut that allows you to get the angle you need, so you can actually tighten or loosen this to get any angle on this hook. You can get the gun to be really held at any angle. In fact, you can even have these hooks upside down at times to allow the gun to apply tension upwards with another hook in the rear applying downwards or whatever. I'm just gonna have two that are straight up for this gun because I don't need to do anything more complex than that. But you can see with this mounting system, you can actually change how far away or how close it is to the wall, depending on the kind of gun you have. If it had a weird charging handle, for example, you might need to have it further away from the wall. And then by loosening these bits, you can change the angle of attack of the actual hook that's holding the gun to give any perspective you'd like. So that, along with things like this, allow you to do pretty much you'd ever want to do, anything you'd ever want to do with a, with a pistol, a rifle, or anything else you want to mount on the wall. The variety's endless. These can go at different angles, then put hooks anywhere you want. It, 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 it's like a box of creativity with this Matrix Army wall. So I'm not that creative on mounting my guns. I just want them to look cool. So we're gonna go simple with two hooks. Let's go ahead and put these hooks up and get the gun up there and I'll show you more in a moment. So here's a simple example of mounting the mounting point into a slat. So we've got this part lined up right here. Obviously we need that lined up to be able to get it into the slat. So then you slide it in, so like so, all the way, turn it and then tighten this nut and then crank on it a little bit with a wrench. That is now locked in. You don't need to do anything more than that. And then we know the hook we want to use is right here. And then you just thread that right onto the front. And again, as I said, there's a locking nut. You can go down and you can get it closer to the wall. Or you can move it further out. And then just move out the locking nut and it'll lock in place anywhere you need it to be. So it's as simple as that. If you need to adjust this up or down, all you have to do is loose, loosen the tension on the rear nut a little bit. And once you've loosened it, you can slide it and tighten it again. And that's it. 
So that's how you get the gun even once it's in the wall. So these slats move up and down, and obviously you're going to find out where you're going to put the gun, wherever on the stock or barrel or wherever it's going to go. And if this happens to be a little canted or uneven, you can just adjust that, move it up or down until you have it nice and even, or however you want it to display it. You could even have it at an angle if you'd like it to. That's how you get the mounting points in. Let's go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll put up the 1897 shotgun. And boom, it's as simple as that. We now have the 1897 Winchester shotgun mounted on the wall, and the wall looks complete without any significant gaps. I guess I got some room right here and here, but I could do some more, but I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. So, like I said earlier, we were approached the beta test this wall, and I can tell you that both mine and Ian's experiences are that this is an exceptional piece of equipment. If you have some really cool pieces of history or some, some fine family heirlooms that you want to display in a more aesthetic way than just locking it in a dark box, the Matrix Army wall is an excellent way to do it. Now, honestly, they're not cheap. However, neither are the guns. And so this is something for a specific niche application. It's only if you really want to have a presentation piece in your wall or turn some of your pieces of history into the decoration of your home. Now, remember, security is paramount. Make sure this is done in a secure way and in a secure place. But if you have that ability and you have a location like that, I can heartily recommend Jeff's Matrix Armory walls. And as you can see, it's really added a little bit of elegance to my rather destroyed and difficult to navigate hacker room. So guys, I hope you appreciate this kind of content. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.